Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I am talking to those of you all who need to be free of sickness that is directly tied to being stressed all the time. Being free from sickness, and this sickness is directly tied from being stressed all the time. You have gone to the Lord. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have asked the Lord. Lord, can you please take this cup from me? This is too much. Every time I turn around, I am getting bad news. Lord, when will this season be over? I am actually sick as a result of having to fight this battle and that battle. I am actually going through far too much because these people are saying this and saying that. And the Lord tells you, hold on. Hold on. I'm holding, Lord, but it's just so much. And then they tell me that you're not going to put no more on us than we can bear. But it sure feels like a lot. Financial trouble. First thing, first thing for a lot of folks that tends to affect them a lot. They are focused on the money. They are focused on the fact that collectors are calling them. They are focused on the fact that there's not enough. Okay. The Lord says, that just like we cut away toxic folks, you also got to cut away some of those unnecessary expenses. Going through detail by detail, line by line. Wait a minute. What is this? What is that? Where's this money going? What did we do with this? What did we do with that? Give an account to one another. Where is the money going? Those that are disobedient, those that are secretive, those that like to hide things, the Lord says he will be exposing them. So you don't have to worry about that because I know some of you all, you pray just like I pray. And you are like, this is some foolishness that's going on. Don't you worry about it at work, at home, wherever the hidden opposition is, the Lord will be exposing. You didn't just happen to come across this message. God wanted you to hear. He wanted you to hear and be encouraged. That's why some of you all are so stressed because you don't have a clue what really is going on. Because somebody has a smoke screen up. Because somebody else is telling secrets. Because somebody else is bad mouthing everybody. And you know you hear a little bit of this and a little bit, bit of that and you don't know what to believe. Okay? But we are just continuing to acknowledge what the pain is, what the struggle is, and what have you. But... We are not going to allow the enemy to take us out of here prematurely. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus right now. Don't allow that enemy to take you out of here prematurely. You are doing well. Those of you all who've been in this network for quite some time, you know you're doing well. Don't give up now. But of course he's going to uh, you know, come up with all sorts of tactics and so forth because he doesn't want you to succeed. Those that are around you that are not subscribing to the belief of Christ that are not trying to read the word that are not trying to do anything more than cause some problems they are not going to uh, um, lighten up you know they're going to continue with their foolishness if they're not doing it with you they're going to do it with someone but you're asking in Jesus name Lord that you want him to be there with you every step of the way Psalm 23 1 says the Lord is my shepherd who is your shepherd the Lord, I shall not want. No more, I want this, I want that, I want this. No, you're going to sit quiet now on that and allow the Lord to shepherd you, to guide you. Picture a shepherd and some sheep. There's the green pasture, there's a wolf in the distance. The shepherd's job is to keep that wolf at bay. So while you're over there enjoying the green grass, God is going to be over there dealing with the wolf. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. I need to be running around shouting right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. All right. Okay. Now, the other issue, right? Got you all sick and upset and coughing and carrying on. People don't want to cover their mouths. People don't want to, uh, you know, clean behind their illnesses. So then we touch something. Next thing you know, oh, now we're coughing. Okay. Now, I will tell you that there are places in the scripture, especially um, in the Old Testament, where they talk about, you know, washing hands. That is not outdated. That is not outdated. Folks need to wash their hands and they also need to uh, clean places where their hands touch and where everybody else's hands touch. Okay. 
this isn't one of those popular messages, but I will mention that cleaning the light switches, cleaning the faucets, cleaning the door handles around your home, changing the pillowcases. Some of you all needed to be reminded of that. You remember grandmothers and grandfathers and so forth going around talking about, oh, where's the Lysol and everything, okay? Spray those things and use those Lysol disinfectant wipes and so forth. And I'm not getting paid to say that. So I want you to know that, but you know, go around and clean those uh, atmospheres. You know, sickness is in the air. What's what's another thing that's breaking people's hearts? Think about it. I gave you a hint when I say hearts. Love. People get sick often in atmospheres where they don't feel loved. Okay. Some folks. Some folks ended up prematurely in their grave because somebody stopped loving them. Just stopped. Stopped showing love. Stopped being appreciative of them. Didn't want to guide them through the dark places of their lives. Gave up on them. Okay? May have never loved to begin with because there's a lot of actors out here. A lot of them. A lot of them. That's one of my um, motivations for writing that book. Uh, too much, too soon, internet dating blues. A lot of rushing. Rushing to do this, rushing to do that, but there's no love. And so you're sick behind it. You see family members not loving one another. People not loving you. Or you stop loving other folks. And so it messes with your head, it messes with your heart, it upsets your stomach, okay? And like I said, some people who could have lived a little longer, you know, they already had their share of illnesses, cancer is an example, they end up in their grave sooner because folks around them, oh, I guess this one is leaving, so let me find somebody else to replace this one, you see? And I know some of you all are saying, mmm... I remember when, mm-hmm, yep, the day that you broke up or started breaking up with someone. Notice how you started feeling on the inside. Some of you all felt good, but others, you were sick. You were sick in the stomach and everything. It took a long time to get over some folks. I know for me, I remember years ago, my stomach hurt for, I don't know, a week or two every time I thought about this person. So it's real. It is real. So, what is something else, right? What is something else that just keeps us sick? Well, a lot of you all know of some folks that have divorced, okay? You're listening to one of them in the past, went through a divorce, and divorce will sicken you, right? A bad marriage. You go through that process and you come out either feeling good about your decision or not feeling so good, depending on what you were doing in that relationship. We hear that scripture about um, Proverbs 18.22 that says, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. And that's fine for those individuals that um, are definitely following these precepts in the Bible. But those who are ignorant of the Bible and God and all that, it, it's not typically a, a good thing for them when they got a long track record of using and abusing women. Mm -mm. Or when they've had a lot of bad examples around them. Nope. Those folks who find a wife, they find a problem. They find a burden. They find a curse because their attitude was negative from the start, you see. If you're not giving a person the benefit of the doubt from the beginning, and you're already going into the relationship saying, oh, it's the old ball and chain. And you're not the least bit spiritual, then guess what? It's going to be just that. You know, if you're unequally yoked with someone, you're the spiritual one, but they're not so much. It's going to be a struggle. If you marry someone who's got a lot of issues with family before they even met you, it's going to be some problems. Emotional baggage. They talk about the exes, or they may not talk about the exes, but there's a lot of stuff that says that, hmm, you, you miss that ex, don't you? 
Okay? They're bringing this stuff into the relationship. So that's not your issue though. Your issue is to be healed from all of this. So part of being healed from all of the drama that people put upon you is to stop responding to it. Come on now. I'm going to take you somewhere. Somewhere where a lot of folks don't like to go because they know it requires a bit of work. There is this thing about us that always feels like we need to respond whenever somebody says something or does something that hurts us. Okay? But I've been around some wise women in my life who they weren't talkers. Not in the least. Okay? And they could go through a fire and come back out and be okay and smile and cook some food the next day. And it's like, how do they do that? The Lord said they don't respond. They don't respond. You see, as long as you're dispensing your frustration all the time, contrary to what a lot of psychologists might say, well, you should say I feel and express your emotions and all that. There comes a point with some personalities that you cannot do that. You've got to just say, you know what? I am not responding to this. I'm establishing my boundary right here and now. I don't have to tell this person how I feel or anything because I got enough body language that's going to let them know that I'm not going to tolerate this anymore. And so these wise women who did not respond to the yelling man, the frustrated man, the quiet man, the man who slams doors, you know, those type of women, they actually went the distance in their marriages. Okay? Now, how happy they were and all of that... That was irrelevant as far as they were concerned. I've got children that I need to raise. I've got business that I need to take care of. He wants to be that way. That's his business, honey. I don't go over there messing around. My husband is who he is, you see. And I can't change him. I'm not going to try to change him. I've got things that I need to do. And then those that said, Lord, take this from me because it is too much. Those men ended up leaving before the women. Okay, I dedicated my book to those deceased women in When Mothers Cry. Okay. Some of those women, though, unfortunately, ended up dying, though, before the men. Now, we can look at this as a good thing or a bad thing. A good thing being that I don't have to deal with this drama anymore. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking me to glory. Or a bad thing in the sense that they were so sick. From all of the stress and all the worry and all of the upset over the course of their lives, some of which involve partners as, as well as children, too. And their bodies and their minds couldn't take it. Some folks would say, well, we don't want to blame and we don't want you. Look, if your hand was in the cookie jar, right, and you took the cookie out the cookie jar and you didn't ask, and I come along and I check and the cookie is gone. Yes, I'm going to blame you. Okay? Bottom line. Sometimes people take all sorts of scriptures and they mix them up. And they try to decorate them so that they don't have to experience anybody pointing a finger. But use wordplay for somebody else. I'm not that person. We are going to blame those individuals that had no business putting a whole bunch of stuff on folks that shouldn't have been okay now there are some folks that bring on their own destruction and it has little to do with us and in cases like that no we're not blaming anybody you know unless we want to blame the person that's going through and who knows maybe some of you all are in that situation where you have no one to blame but yourself and you may have even said it you see if I would have established the boundaries if I would have you know did something as simple as wash my hands you know cleaned around the house or if I would have took my vitamins or if I would have um, you know got away from them negative folks and stopped letting them you know affect me emotionally you know like they did maybe I wouldn't have these issues you see Maybe I wouldn't have been eating so much and now I've got all these weight uh, related issues. Uh, maybe I wouldn't have been trying to run from this one and that one if I would have just stood my ground, you know, and dealt with the issues um, instead of internalizing everything and running. 
then maybe I wouldn't be so sick, okay? Situations like that, you're honest with yourself. You're honest with yourself. And so you come up with something. You ask the Lord to bless you with the wisdom so that you don't continue to stay in that uh, mental illness or in that physical illness that keeps plaguing you. And when you need a doctor's care, you seek a doctor. And you ask the Lord, you know, to give that doctor the wisdom to give you the right medicine or the right advice or whatever it is that you need. You see? But the, but the healing is coming for some of you all. And I can feel it in my spirit as I'm talking to you right now. The healing is coming. But you just need to tweak some things, you know. Not get on the phone so much with folks talking about illnesses. Um, not watching sick folks on TV all day and, you know, some folks like to do that when they're sick. You know, folks acting crazy on television, folks battling with all sorts of illnesses, uh, reading about it on the internet, reading, buying all these guides and everything. I mean, if I keep inundating myself with all of this illness and then I'm looking at pictures and stuff too, that's going to uh, slow my progress as well. And we want people healed immediately <laughs> or as soon as possible in Jesus name, you know, and sometimes we can keep ourselves in illness because we just keep surrounding ourselves with sick people. If you know you're getting to a place where you're often being sick, that is a clear indication you've got to go elsewhere and do some other things. Okay, you've got to because it's either your health uh you know, or others, because you might be the one that's passing the illness around. There are those individuals who have done just that. So when you know that you're sick and you know that there's some things that's keeping you sick, you've got to take necessary precautions um, and do what needs to be done. Well, I thank you so much for listening, and I'm going to take the time out to pray for none other than the sick today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are trusting in you. We are trusting in your healing right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We are trusting that all things are going to work together for good to them who are called to them. In the name of Jesus, I had to stop. I had to stop. We're not going to do prayer right now. I got to take you to your Bible. <laughs> Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. And all things do work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Okay. And then I'm going to let you go. There are those um, that are mentally disturbed. You might be going through right now as a result of some bad news. Lord Jesus, he may shine that second Timothy chapter one, verse seven, for God hath not given us. You need this reminder for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind and fear will keep you ill. So you have to turn that fear over to the Lord and stop preaching fear and stop talking about your fear. I'm scared. I don't know. I'm worried and all that. You're keeping yourself upset. And I'm sure there were people around you, for those of you all who are very verbal about your sickness, who told you to stop worrying and stop being fearful. And you say, yeah, I know, but no, there is no but. Be quiet. Be quiet. The Lord just wants you to be quiet and allow him to work. Let him work. You are giving place to the enemy when you keep talking about fear, when you keep talking about worry, when you keep talking about all these things. That the Lord is saying, when are you going to start speaking faith? When are you going to sp start speaking healing over your life in Jesus' name? Psalm 55, 22 says, cast thy burden upon the Lord. You keep taking it out of his hand, some of you all. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Come on, if you're righteous, you're not going to go through like other folks. You're just not. People are going to look up and say, you're, you're starting to look better. You're starting to... You know, feel better? What's going on? I mean, you were like sick as a dog last week. You just changed your mindset. You just changed your mindset. There are very intelligent individuals that will talk about um, how uh, one can change uh, his or her mind 
in such a way where there there is healing and that can be done you're thinking positive thoughts you're thinking about healing you're seeing yourself walking and being you know normal again you're seeing yourself feeling good about life even if everything doesn't heal correctly or as fast as you want or you still got some quirks along the way you're still staying positive anyway God didn't make any junk <laughs> we might think sometimes that we're a piece of junk, but God didn't make any junk. So we change our mindset and say, you know what, I, Lord, this is just a body. This is just a body that you gave me. It's fearfully and it's wonderfully made, even when it is battered at times, you know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the healing. I appreciate it. I appreciate what you're about to do. You see, I know sometimes it's hard. I know it's some, sometimes it's hard because, I mean, I, sometimes I look at stuff on my body and I say, it's real hard to be positive <laughs> when you see stuff, you know. But you got to just, you know, have have that positive uh, mentality anyway because that enemy, he wants to take you out of here sooner rather than later with all that fear and worry, you know. Well, I should say that God, you know, is ultimately the one that's going to take us out of here. But you know what I mean. Um, uh, three, John three, two, beloved, I wish above all things that what thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Hold on to that. Did you hear what I said? It's coming out of King James. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Okay. And Jesus is still among us and he's still doing some things. So that's, he's got the Holy Ghost. That's, that's the connection to Jesus. He ascended unto heaven, but he left the Holy Ghost, you see. So Holy Ghost, have your way upon this listener right now in the name of Jesus. Let the positive speech come flowing from his or her mouth this day. Let the positive thoughts come into his or her mind right now. Let the positive voices come into his or her ear gate right now in the name of Jesus Jeremiah 30 17 a for I will restore health unto thee Lord Jesus this is a word for you for I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds saith the Lord he said it and that should settle it what did he say for I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds saith the Lord this is the same one in Psalm 103, 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, right? The wickedness. Some people say, the reason why I'm going through is because of all my wicked deeds and so forth. Well, we're not even going to go into all of that. You're trying to get healed, okay? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. That's that wickedness. Who healeth all thy diseases. We're trusting in him. Jeremiah 17, 14 will close with this one. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the word. Thank you, Lord, for declaring healing over my body. I look to see change. This time next week, I look to see change, Lord Jesus. I want to be made whole through and through, mentally, physically, and spiritually, Lord Jesus. Order my steps. If I need doctor's care, so be it. If I need a surgery, so be it. Lord Jesus, I know that your hand will be upon that doctor who has to do whatever it is to fix me up. Lord Jesus, I pray for the discipline to eat what I'm supposed to eat, to do the types of exercises I'm supposed to uh, perform to be around the type of people that are going to lift me up and not bring me down in Jesus name Lord I'm not going to speak words of fear anymore and worry I'm not going to allow people to scare me about my illness I am not going to uh, rob myself of a quality life behind something that someone has said or something that someone has done in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus wounds be healed Lord Jesus mental illness be healed in Jesus name in Jesus name
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A grieving heart be healed in Jesus' name. Ulcers be healed in Jesus' name. Tumors be healed in Jesus' name. Blood clots be removed in Jesus' name. Veins, veins, healthy veins. Healthy veins in Jesus' name. Heart issues, Lord Jesus. Heal, heal in Jesus' name. Foot issues, Lord Jesus. Bring healing this day. Muscle spasms and muscle cramps and back aches and stomach pain. Be healed right now. Take the pain away. Take the pain away in Jesus' name. Issues of blood be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Chronic headaches. Lord Jesus, heal those and give peace to others. In Jesus' name. Amashiandas, broken hearts as a result of bad relationships. Restore them, Amashiandas. Make these people whole so they'll stop grieving over people. In Jesus' name. Amashiandas. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Depression be gone, Messiandas. No more depression. No more depression. Somebody keeps saying that they don't want to be depressed. Somebody else says no more anxiety. I'm right there. Mama Shianda the Lord says. No more fear. No more worry. No more stress. The Lord says, I got this. I got your back. I got you. I got you in the palm of my hand. Some of you all need to read Psalm 91. Others need to read Psalm 23. Others need to read Romans 8, 28. Others need to go over into some scriptures. Psalm 5, Psalm 11. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you all, you need to go over into Ezekiel because God has given you all a prophetic ministry. And you need to look at the major and the minor prophets and understand how to deliver a message. A message that is not going to always be a happy one. You're coming up out of this sickness, but you are coming to give others a message, a prophetic message. They are going to look at you as the prophet or prophetess of doom and gloom, but you've got to give them the warnings. Because there are others like you that could stop being ill if they would just let some people, places, and things go that are toxic to their bodies. Toxic to their bodies. I'm seeing bandages on some folks because they've been in accidents as a result of refusing to let go of licenses to stop driving. When you know you have some type of mental issues that you're dealing with, you should not be behind the wheel. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. Woo. I ended up taking on some of y'all's burdens today. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Because I've been through some things. <laughs> Lord Jesus. And others the Lord has been healing me from. And I'm just grateful. That's why I said I could just shout right now. But for that moment, he wanted me to feel some of y'all's pain. And it, ain't, and it ain't easy. It ain't easy. I'm asking the Lord to take stomach pains away right now. I didn't have stomach pains. But then once I started talking about healing and so forth. And thinking about the things that people have gone through. That's when the stomach pain started showing up. 
So I'm asking that the Lord just release me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your healing. Some of you all, if you experience gas, a release of gas, that is a sign that there are some things that's being healed within. If you are noticing that a pounding sensation has come upon you um, and it's either intensified or it is lessened, thank the Lord because He is cleaning up your body and certain toxins are going to have to come out of your body. So do look into detox programs. Um, some of you all are going to need to uh, fast. Um, a Daniel fast is most appropriate if you already have health issues, um, but you still need to eat. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Fluids, I'm hearing that in the spirit, and not just any fluids. We're not talking about sodas, okay? Let those go. When you are ill, you don't need to be drinking anything that's harsh, anything that is out of a box, that has all sorts of things on the label that you can't even read. Okay? And there's a lot of those types of things out there. But the organic foods are the way to go when you're ill. Okay? If you are pregnant, you already know. The dietitians, they'll roll out the red carpet for pregnant women. I know because I had two of them. They will tell you things that folks that have never been pregnant know about. Um, they will... Um, just really uh, stay on top of you about some things because you're with child and they don't want your child to end up being born into this world sick so listen to your dietitians one thing is they told me the canned goods was not a good idea uh, while I was pregnant because of the um, the material that um, the cans are made with and the fact that you don't know how long some of that food has been in those cans. Okay? So, um, you know, it's even if you do know, it, it was still not a good idea. So that, that was eliminated out of my diet. No eating out of cans. Okay? Um, there was portion control involved where they told me that the meat should not be any bigger than the palm of my hand. Remember, when you're going through an illness, it is very hard to process meat. You know, because it's sitting in your body for so long and it's just rotting in there. And then your body has to break all of that down. Um, another thing was, was that they said there should be more vegetables on my plate. And that the mixed vegetables weren't um, always a good thing to eat. If I was going to eat them, um, I should only eat like a handful of them. Um, the reason why was because of uh, the sugar, my sugar, glucose levels and so forth were going up. You know, so the vegetables, mixing them all together like that's not a good idea. But, you know, having, um, you know, the green beans, um, you know, separate from the carrots, you know, stuff like that. Instead of having lima beans, carrots and, you know, green beans and, all, you know, corn and all of that all mixed up together like that. Okay. The other thing was um, making sure instead of having three course meals, um it was my two larger meals during the early part of the day and then um, the uh, the dinner was light and there was no uh, special treats unless of course it was um, you know the sugar content was uh, well managed so um, sugar content for drinks 15 grams Okay, I, I used to talk to them about some of the brands. They said, oh, that has 28 grams, that has 30 grams. You don't need to drink that. You know, so um, water, lots of water. And if I wanted to flavor my water, they said, well, you could squeeze a little bit of lemon or something in it. You know, so um, this is serious. This is serious. You cannot do the things of the Lord and be sick all the time. Okay, look sick, feel sick, act sick, you just can't because all you're doing is spreading sickness. All right, this is why it is crucial that God's people be strong, strong in Him and strong physically. A lot of ministers can't even do any marketing, can't even walk around and talk about their churches because they're overweight, their knees hurt, their back hurt, their legs hurt. 
And then they wonder why they don't have uh, many folks in their congregations. They don't listen. They don't listen. They continue to eat comfort food instead of taking comfort in the Lord. So I hope that this message has been a blessing to you. Continue to be free in Christ, in Jesus' name. Allow the Lord to continue to heal you. It's not going to come from just listening to one message. You're going to have to be proactive, okay, in your healing. I thank you so much for listening, and to God be the glory.